What about culture? Is there any proof that Neanderthals, for example, did the things that we do or similar things like dancing, playing music, uh, making instruments, uh, jewelry, yeah. religion, yeah, any of that stuff? It's very tricky to, uh, to know about some of those things. Neanderthal behavior was certainly more complex than, than we used to think. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, I would have said there's, there's a big behavioral gap between us and Neanderthals. You know, they didn't make much use of, of raw materials like bone and antler and ivory. Uh, they didn't do any art um, and things like that. Now, the gap between us and Neanderthals is much narrower. Some people say it's disappeared altogether. I, I don't go that far. Wow. Um, hmm. Because there are some examples of Neanderthal markings on cave walls, uh, engravings. There's a thing called the hashtag, which seems to be made by a Neanderthal in Gibraltar, maybe 40, 45,000 years ago. Um, and uh, there are engravings on bones, zigzag marks and so on, and linear, you know, what might be county marks on, on some bones. So Neanderthals were doing that. But as far as I know, at least in my view, there's no representational art produced by the Neanderthals. So when we come on to 35,000 years ago, we've got lots of evidence of Homo sapiens. If even earlier than that, there's, there's caves in Sulawesi where it seems that Homo sapiens was painting animals on the cave wall 45,000 years ago. Uh, pigs, wild pigs for example, and we have the cave paintings in France at thirty-five to 40,000. Neanderthals, as far as we know, and also statuettes, I should say, from 40,000 years ago in Germany, we have lovely little statuettes of animals made of uh, mammoth ivory and even a female figurine um, from Germany at about 40,000 years. There's no evidence of that for Neanderthals. So at the moment, it doesn't look like they produce representational art, uh, which seems to be unique to at least later Homo sapiens, uh, but they were marking cave walls. They did apparently uh, mark things symbolically. So making these zigzag markings meant something to the maker and probably they were transmitting a message to another individual. So it's symbolic of some message which we can't interpret. So Neanderthals had that complexity. We know that they did make more complex tools. They certainly mounted um, you know, spear points onto handles. Uh, we know there's evidence even of adhesive that Neanderthals were making to keep uh, these tools together. Um, there's a site called Schöningen in Germany, dating from around 300,000 years ago, where you have the very rare preservation of wooden tools. And it's really quite striking just what a variety of tools were being made of wood 300,000 years ago. Now, we don't actually know the species that made those tools because this other species Homo heidelbergensis uh, was also around in Europe at that time. So it could have been heidelbergensis, it could have been Neanderthals making, early Neanderthals making those wooden tools, but they are a variety of tools made very skillfully by people who really knew the material they were working in, choosing specific trees, a specific species of tree, a specific kind of tree, and then spending a lot of time working on these to make spears, uh, throwing sticks, digging sticks and, and other kinds of artifacts out of wood. So most of that evidence has disappeared because wood doesn't survive well, uh, but that shows us the complexity of Neanderthals and, and their predecessors. And things like marine exploitation. Again, 20 years ago, um, it seemed that Homo sapiens were the ones that were really exploiting the marine resources uh, and Neanderthals didn't. Well, we now know Neanderthals were exploiting marine resources at times. Neanderthals living on the coast were collecting shellfish and they were eating even marine mammals at times. Uh, remains of dolphin are found there, of seal. Now, because they may have scavenged some of these, maybe a dolphin washed up near the cave, but they ate it. But they certainly collected enough shellfish that they were purposely doing that. And they were in Gibraltar. We found evidence of Neanderthals taking limpets and then baking them as people do today. As your fire is dying down, you drop your limpet shells into the fire and they open up naturally from the fire. Uh, and that's what Neanderthals seem to have done uh, in, in Van Gogh Cave in Gibraltar. Um, Smart yeah. people. So they, you know, they were much more like us than we used to think. And that's why this old image of the brutal Neanderthal, the ape-like Neanderthal that used to be around, uh, we have to throw that out, certainly. What kind of clothes did they wear? Well, unfortunately, the evidence of that has, has disappeared. Um, I'm sure they must have had okay. clothing. Um, they were certainly, yeah. they had the technology to work animal skins. 
um, and they must have worn clothing at times um, when it was really cold. Maybe they didn't when it was warm, they didn't need to, uh, but perhaps it's comfortable to cover bits of your body if you're going through, you know, uh, some, some coarse vegetation. You're going to, you know, if you're wearing clothing, that will protect you a bit. Maybe they had shoes, but again, not direct evidence of that. Um, but yes, I'm sure they had clothing when it was really cold, of course. Um, they must have had clothing. Maybe they didn't have sewing needles. Perhaps that's something that came with Homo sapiens. And if you've got sewing needles, you can produce better insulation for your clothing, for your tents, uh, uh, for your to cover your baby, to keep your baby warm, which is critical for survival. Um, so maybe they didn't have that, but I'm sure they had clothing. Um, I'm sure they were skilled at working animal skins. Yeah. You mentioned the hashtag that was carved into a rock, I believe, by a Neanderthal. Yes. And since they were so similar to us, and you're saying that the, the difference that we thought was once there is getting narrower and narrower, is it reasonable to assume then that they had language similar to ours? I'm sure they were talking to each other. I think the language, of course, again, there are experts in this that you could talk to. But for me, I think the complexity of Neanderthal life as we know it means they must have had language. I think if they're doing corporate right. hunting, for example, um, then then that suggests they've got language, complex communication. But of course, if they really separated from us more than half a million years ago, their language could have evolved in such a different way that it would be unlike any language we can imagine today from the diversity of languages around the world today. So what that language was like, we can't say. I think it was probably a practical language for what they, you know, it was based on their everyday activities, what they were doing now, maybe what they were doing tomorrow. It probably wasn't a language that had, you know, very complex terminology. It didn't maybe have a lot of abstractions. It didn't talk about the, the deep past or the, or the distant future. It didn't probably talk much about imaginary worlds, but it was a, probably a practical language. And I'm sure they, they had that capability. Uh, and there's one site I haven't mentioned in terms of Neanderthal complexity. So there's a remarkable site uh, deep in a cave, a Brunicol Cave in, in France, um, deep in the cave, well beyond any daylight. Uh, explorers found um, two oval structures made out of stalagmites. So someone had systematically broken stalagmites and built dry stone walls in oval shapes. They'd had fires down there because it was completely black, so completely dark. So they must have had fires. And there's evidence of these fires, of them burning uh, both charcoal and animal bones and animal fat for these fires. When these stalagmites were dated, these stalagmite rings, they were dated to 176,000 years ago, um, deep in this cave. And at that time in southern France, we only think Neanderthals were around. So very likely this was made by Neanderthals, why they did it deep in the cave. Some people think this is some, you know, religious structure, you know, some ritual structure. Um, I think they could have actually been living down there at times because 176,000 years ago it was pretty cold. It might have actually been warmer in the cave, sheltered. Um, okay, they'd have needed fires to keep burning down there. Um, but maybe actually these are hut structures and uh, they've not been the floor has not been excavated yet and so we don't know if if this if there will be living debris down there where they're actually living or were these some special ritual structures so there's a lot to learn about that but it shows the complexity and the fact that they've gone and systematically broken stalagmites to a given size to build these walls again that's cooperative behavior that wasn't just one or two people doing that it was groups and again, that suggests language to communicate something as complex as that. And back to your question about music. I know I didn't answer that one, um, whether they could have had music. Um, there's a controversial um, flute made out of cave bear bone uh, from a site called Juve Babe. Um, and that um, is claimed to have been made by Neanderthal. Is that the Slovenian, Slovenian side? Slovenian That's right. That the... So there are holes. Yeah, there are I'm holes from Slovenia. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 you know it. So there are holes in this yeah, yeah, bone. Yeah which seem to be spaced out as though it is a flute and you people have replicated it and played it as a flute. Um, but other archaeologists have looked at these holes and think that they've been produced by animal teeth. So cave bear teeth and hyena and lion teeth, you know, fit into those holes equally. So 
it could be an accidental product that we recognize as a musical instrument. So I'm cautious about that being a musical instrument. And the best ones you know about come from 40,000 years onwards. So when we come to Homo sapiens in Germany, for example, there are flutes made out of uh, vulture bones um, and even out of ivory, very difficult material. And those undoubtedly are musical instruments. For Neanderthals, yeah, I'm sure they had some kind of music. I mean, those people who are breaking off all these stalagmites deep in that cave. You can even play stalagmites like xylophones. So I don't see why the Neanderthals couldn't have been drumming in those caves with stalagmites. You know, they'd make a nice ringing sound. Why not? Thank you so much for listening. If you liked what you heard, please consider subscribing to Smart Cookies on YouTube. Uh, what else is there? Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you really liked what you heard, uh, feel free to become my Patreon. No, my patron on Patreon by going to Patreon and becoming my patron. It's really easy. Just type Smart Cookies Podcast in there. You should be able to find me. Last but not least, I have to thank the absolute legends that are my producers on this show, my existing patrons on Patreon, Aida, Mancian, Micha Medved, Medinho, Gordon, Jurechuk, Lorenzo, Mila, Carmen, Taichi, Goran and Veronica. Without you guys, this show wouldn't exist. So massive thanks. Um, and yeah, see you in the next episode. Bye.